Hello and welcome to this video for CE 105205. So in this video, what we are going to talk about is to talk about natural glasses, glass that can be found in nature. So when you think about glass, you typically think of uh, windows or screen for smartphone. Those are the glasses that are made by, uh, by human for certain applications. But there's also some glasses that can be found in nature, some glasses that can be formed naturally. And so what we are going to see first is to see uh, some example of glasses that can be formed in nature and to try to see based on those examples whether we can learn some, uh, some, some characteristics of glasses that will be useful to better understand what a glass is. So first example of glass that can be found in nature is the, the fulgurite. And so here is a picture uh, illustrating uh, an example of such uh, fulgurite material. And so the idea is that those types of uh, fulgurite, they form when there is a, a lightning that hits uh, um, a, a beach sand. And so the idea is that in this case, the, the lightning is going to, to melt the sand and then the sand is going to turn into a glass. And it's going to form this, this types of um, elongated shape, which, which characterize what was the path of the lightning inside the sand. So there's already two interesting characteristics here that, uh, that we can learn from this. The first thing is that um, glass will usually uh, be formed if you have access to some, uh, to some silica, SiO2. So silica is uh, the, the main component of, uh, of sand, so uh, SiO2 or quartz when it's in, uh, in its crystalline form. That's going to be very often a key component that will make it possible to form a glass. It doesn't have to be always this way, but at least in most natural glasses, they will contain some amount of silica. And the other thing is that, uh, uh, that we can realize here is that to form a glass, you will need uh, some, uh, some energy. You will need to provide some energy in order to induce a, a melting of the material. So here in this case, the energy is provided by the lightning. That's, that's going to be the source of energy that is uh, able to, to, to melt the, the sand on the beach. But uh, this source of energy can be uh, take some other forms as well. But in this case, you always need uh, some kind of source of external energy that is going to be high enough in order to melt some rocks or melt some sands in this case and turn it into a glass. Here is another example of this uh, fulgurite uh, types of material where in this case we can see what was the, the, the path that was uh, followed by the lightning in the sand. Here one thing that is pretty interesting is that uh, if you look at this picture on this beach, the reason that the fulgurite here is uh, pointing towards the outside of the beach um, is not because um, it was formed like this. It's because the, the beach used to be higher than that. So this fulgurite needs to be uh, used to be beneath the sand. But uh, after uh, erosion, like the sand uh, gradually disappeared, like the, the level of the beach uh, uh, went gradually went down over time. But the, the fulgurite is still there. And uh, one of the reasons it's still there is that the, the glass that the fulgurite is made of is much more durable than the rest of the, of the beach, the rest of the sand that the beach comprised. And so this is another, a, a first example to show that glasses are typically very durable material. They can survive for a very long time. They are very uh, resistant to weathering or very resistant to corrosion. And to typically those glasses that are formed by nature, you will be able to, to find some example of nature of very old glasses that have been formed millions of years ago and that are still um, intact to this day. So that's a good example to show how durable glass can be. Another example of natural glass is obsidian. So if you have watched uh, Game of Thrones, so this is the what they call the, the dragon glass in, in Game of Thrones. And so those example of glasses, they are formed during a volcanic eruption. And in this case, the idea is that uh, during the eruption, uh, of course, you have some uh, magma, magma that is formed, some lava that is formed. And once this lava uh, uh, cool down, like for example, if it's uh, end up in the ocean, then it can form a glass. So when the lava uh, cools down and freezes into a solid, then it can form these types of glass, which is uh, the, the obsidian. And so this, this, this example, in this case, it's, it's still uh, illustrating the same idea that we discussed in the case of the fulgurite, in the sense that first, in order to form a glass, so you, the, the types of minerals that you will typically use, 
in this case that's going to be the, the 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 lava like the the, the rocks that are initially melt into um, a magma and again those types of rocks they are going to be pretty rich in silica just because there is a lot of silica in the earth crust so that's that's the first thing the second thing is that again in this case you need a, a high source of energy in order to to melt the, the the rock and turn it eventually into a glass and in this case this energy comes out of the the, the volcanic eruption uh, the last thing that is interesting to discuss is that when we think of glass, we typically think of glass as being a transparent window. But like as we see here in the case of uh, obsidian, glass doesn't have to be transparent. Transparency is a very interesting feature of certain of certain glass that that makes it able for us to see through glass, which is key, of course, for windows or screens. But glass doesn't have to be transparent, and and very often, actually, uh, especially in nature, glass are not transparent. So transparency cannot be used to define what a glass is. You have some glasses that are transparent, but some other glasses are not transparent. Another example of glass that you can form in that you can find in nature is this moldavite, and in this case, so the origin of moldavite is is not fully clear. But what people believe is that it's formed uh, at the surface of the earth after an impact from a, a meteorite, and in this case, the idea is that um, so the after you have a meteorite impact, so, so the the impact from the meteorite is going to release a lot of energy, a lot of mechanical energy, and this energy due to the, the impact is going to be used to, to melt the, the rocks near the, the collision zone. And again, so this in this case, this is what is going to act as the source of energy that is able to, to melt the rock and eventually turn it into a glass. And so in this case, the idea is that the, the, the formation of those moldavite is just uh, a consequence of the fact that after the impact of the meteorite, some rocks are uh, melted and, and they eventually going to turn into a glass. So again, another example of a natural glass that is formed after some kind of extreme event, uh, like a lightning or a volcano or um, uh, these types of meteorite impact. Those are the kind of extreme events that can release a lot of energy that is able to melt rocks and turn them into glasses. Another example of glasses, so those are glasses that were found actually on the moon, uh, not on Earth. And so this, this is some glasses that uh, are believed to be uh, formed due to former volcanic eruption on, on, the, on the moon. And again, same idea in this case, those are some uh, pieces of glass that were formed due to the melting of some rocks uh, during the volcanic eruption. And then as they, they, they freeze into solids, those rocks eventually turn into glasses. So those are another example uh, of such glasses. But what's very interesting about those glasses that were found on the moon is that they, they are about uh, 3 billion years old. So it's something that is like, like pretty much half of the age of the universe. So like very, very old material. So that's a proof, and again, of how durable glass can be. They can survive for millions, if not billions of years. So actually glasses, so you can find them in, um, in nature, including very old glasses. You can also find glasses that were made by, uh, by humans, glasses that uh, about uh, like um, 3000 uh, BC, the first glasses that ma were made by the Mesopotamian and the Egyptians. You can still find some example of those glasses because they have, uh, th those are materials that, have, uh, that, that, that are very durable and can survive for a very long time, unlike all the materials like uh, like steel that is going to tend to to rust over time or concrete that is likely not going to survive over time that can uh, start dissolving um, uh, after um, after several centuries so glass uh, among the different types of material that you can think of for for construction is really one of the most durable materials that there is so if we summarize based on those example the, the, the first thing that is a common um, uh, similarities among all those glasses is that forming a glass requires some heat. It requires some, uh, some energy, some, uh, an extreme event that is going to be providing enough energy in order to melt some rocks. And so that can come from the, uh, a volcanic eruption, a meteorite impact, or a lightning. But in all of those cases, to form a glass, at least in nature, you will need a source of heat that is uh, high enough to melt some rocks. Uh, 
The second thing is that all of those glasses that are found in nature, they are typically very old. And the fact that we can still find them is a proof that uh, glass is a very strong and very um, uh, durable material that is that and it can be used that's that's why it's used to 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 store nuclear waste immobilization for example it's because it can survive for such a long time and the last um, thing is that glass will typically at least in nature contain some silica the silica is going to be a pretty important um, component of glasses that that's uh, it's going to be a pretty important types of oxide that makes it possible to form a glass as opposed to a crystal. So we'll come back to that uh, during this class. But uh, for now, we can just keep in mind that silica, SiO2, is going to be a very important or very key aspect of many glasses, both for natural glasses, but also for glasses made by humans. And to some extent, it's not surprising that glass contains silica because uh, the um, silica is a big part of the, the earth crust. So most of the rocks that you can find on the earth crust to some extent will contain some silica. So just to give you some numbers, about 90% of the earth crust uh, is made of silicate material, so material that will contain some, some, uh, to some extent some SiO2. And uh, in the mantle, like about 50% of the mantle is also based on some silicate material. So um, the um, one characteristic is that, so the fact that glass contains a lot of silica is also because silica is one of the most common material that you can find on uh, earth crust. Besides silica, the other types of elements that you will typically find in glasses, they will also follow pretty much what are the, the most common elements that you can find on the uh, on earth crust so for example like what this plot here shows it shows the the, the abundance of virus elements in uh the uh, in the earth crust and as you can see the, the the elements that are the most common will be um oxygen uh silica aluminum sodium magnesium calcium potassium iron so all of those elements and uh, just one thing to realize here is that it's a logarithmic scale. So every time um, you go one decade up, it means that you have 10 times more of those elements than the rest of the elements. So it's really those elements here. Those are really the, 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 the most common elements by several orders of magnitude as compared to the other elements. So the, the, since those elements are the ones that are the most commonly available, in the earth crust then it's no surprise that they are also going to be the most common elements that are used to form glass and this is for a reason of abundance because those ma those minerals are very largely available but also because of cost because those elements are so widely available easily available just in pretty much every rocks that makes those elements typically fairly cheap or fairly inexpensive so that's another reason why they are, they are typically used in glasses because those are the elements that are going to be uh, cheap to use, cheap to buy, and, and hence it's uh, favored when you make a glass to use something that is going to be fairly cheap. So this is what we can say about natural glasses. Of course, glasses are, um, they can be found in nature, but they are much more commonly made by human because they are F finding a natural glass is really going to require some extreme events that are pretty rare, like meteorites, volcanic eruption, lightning, etc. So uh, most of the glasses are uh, made by human. And so in the next video, what we will see is to review what are the typical application where glasses are used um, to understand what are the, the, the range of products that uh, glass is used for and why uh, glasses is used for those products. What are the interesting characteristics of glasses that makes it a desirable material for those types of products?